it's a fake spider. Oh, man, it's crazy. That's, what a great way to start off a video, am I right? First of all, let me say this. Welcome to the video about 20.4. Second of all, the second thing is, look at this. I've got a mic. Professional, super professional. Not really sure if it works. It's got this like little dangly thing, but we're going. Let's get it right into it. All right, so 20.4. We've got ourselves a 20-minute time cap. Um, for some of you will need it, some of you won't, but it's a 20-minute time cap to accomplish. Essentially, this is our heavy lifting, increasing weight, lowering reps. Um, we always have it every year. Last year was cleans. Um, the year before that, it was snatches. And this year, it is clean and jerks, which we haven't done in a long time. So pretty cool. Um, real briefly, what is the workout? And then we'll get into, I'll kick this board out of the way, pull my other board in, and we'll talk about four different things, OK? Four different things. All right, so first of all, 20 minute time cap. We're doing box jumps, not box jump overs. Kind of confusing to me. Um, I didn't think we'd ever really see box jumps, if I'm being honest with you, ever again. Um, box jump overs are very, very easy to judge. Uh, box jump overs require you opening the hips at the top, and sometimes, you know, similar to deadlift, similar to any movement, there's always that, it, did he open his hips kind of thing. And so, honestly, I thought it was going to be box jump overs because there's less to judge, but I digress. We're doing 30 box jump overs. We're doing some clean and jerks with increasing weight and decreasing reps, and, reps, and we're finally getting pistols. Hallelujah. I mean, they call them single leg squats. They're pistols. I think they called them single leg squats and not pistols because they're trying to be politically correct, which, whatever, it's a pistol. Okay? All right, so four things we're going to talk about today. 420.4 that I think that I thought about before I did the workout literally like 30 minutes ago. You can tell I'm sweating a lot. It's really painful. Anyways, so number one is your warm up or pre workout and going through it and having some kind of a plan. So, number one, warming up. You're going to need to warm up your clean and jerk to what percent, a kind of a percentage based on what you think you're going to hit, right? So, I'm always going to go off the, ma the male weight. So, forgive me, females, just kind of take the, the male weight I say and kind of transfer it over to your female weight, right? So if you think I'm going to hit 315, then cool. You need to probably warm up to a higher percentage. I'm not saying hit 315. For me personally, I warmed up to 305. I hit 305, no belt, no sleeve, no nothing, kind of completely raw and thought, okay, I feel good. Let's start the workout and let's get right into it, right? If you're a female, obviously you're hitting close to 205. Um, if you're a male and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'm not going to hit 315, I'm going to hit 275, then obviously what I'm trying to say is don't warm up and hit your weight unless you really feel like you need to. Um, you're going to get all the warm up in the world leading up into it, you know, the, the 10, 12, 15, 18 minutes before it where you're warming up your clean and jerk to get to it, right? So that's what I'm trying to say is kind of warm up a percentage to get ready for it. You don't have to actually hit it, but get close to it. Number one, you need to have a like a preconception before the workout of when you want to rotate between a power clean and push jerk to a squat clean, squat jerk, okay? We're not all Nick your anchor. Insert clip of Nick your anchor power cleaning and push jerking this. We're not all Nick your anchor. I cannot, I mean, I can power clean 315. It's going to be super, super ugly, but there's no way I'm going to push jerk it after that. No way. It's just going to completely blow me. So in order to save myself, I'm probably going to end up squat cleaning and split jerking, which is what I did. But what I'm trying to say is you need to make sure that when you're warm up, you're prepared to know when you're going to start transferring from a power clean push jerk over to a squat clean squat split jerk, squat, clean, split jerk, right? So um, one thing I actually highly recommend is don't, if you're going to rotate over, don't ro rotate over to a squat, clean, split jerk when you immediately have to, right? So what I'm trying to say is make sure that you maybe warm this up in the workout and prepare for it a little bit early. So it might be in your best interest. Again, if you're a male and you think, I'm going to get to 315 and I want to try to do it, then maybe your last rep at 275, you do a squat clean split jerk. I mean, really, honestly, how much extra time is it going to take? Maybe half a second. But if your legs can get used to squatting, because remember, you probably haven't, squ you haven't squatted before that, unless you're counting a pistol, your legs might want to get used to the barbell weight pushing you down. So if you can do your last one at 275, it might be worth it. Um, consider that. Also consider maybe if you have to, do one at 225. Like, there's no harm in it. It's not like it takes extra time. And you might think yourself later, if the first, you know, squat clean with a barbell you do is at 315, that's really sneaking heavy for your max, it might put you in the dirt. Um, last night, I think 
Vin Smith always looks great doing clean. So like his clean, you could put on 400 pounds, he still look good even if he hasn't cleaned in 20 minutes. But like I think Sean Sweeney and even Jason Carroll hadn't squat cleaned 275 at all. So their first squat clean was 315 and they, both their first up looked a little sketchy. Jason Carroll more than Sean Sweeney. But that's what I'm trying to say is maybe if you warmed it up previously with the previous weight, might be beneficial. Okay, so that's that's that. Consider that. It's kind of one thing to consider. Um, next up is your shoes. Consider your shoes for what you're doing, right? So I unfortunately am not great at. I can snatch in metcons, but I or flats, whatever you want to call them. But I can't clean and jerk really well in flats. I can do it if I really really need to, but I prefer not to, especially at a heavy percentage that we're doing at 315. So um, consider that, and when you want to rotate over, and if you want to rotate over. Now, so Sean Sweeney did it last night. I think he. Did everything in flats, got to 315, hit one at 315, and then failed his second one, and then switched his shoes to Olympic lifters. So consider that maybe you should want to switch your shoes at a point that is beneficial to you. So for instance, I probably recommend you switching, if you want to go from flats, right, to all these shoes, I'd probably consider doing it um, right after you're doing box jumps. Like treat it as a rest time for there. Because it, Olympic lifting shoes are still pretty good for pistols. So if you're a, someone who needs to do Olympic lifting, needs Olympic lifting shoes for pistols, you probably already thought of that. But it's a little bit difficult, maybe for the box jumps, which we'll get into. But box jumping with lifters is kind of difficult to do, and I wouldn't highly recommend rebounding in them, which is what we'll get to in box jumps. But I think you should highly consider when you want to switch shoes and have them prepared and unlaced and ready to go whenever you decide to get there. And don't switch shoes based purely on the fact that you failed the lift. Like, don't do, do what Sean did. Like, maybe switch a little bit earlier to prepare yourself for it and treat it as rest. Um, box jump. There are 90 box jumps. That's a lot, right? Not box jump. Oh, we're talking box jumps. That's a lot of box jumps. Now, there are three options, I believe, to attack box jumps, okay? This is the first year where step-ups and step-downs are allowed, which is weird. I didn't even know that till this morning when Andrew walked in and said, hey, I think you should consider step-ups. And I was like, dude, that's probably a scale. I'm not going to do scale. And he's like, no, you can do it RX. So step-ups are legal, right? So there's three different options you can do. Obviously, if you're doing box jumps, you can obviously just do a regular box jump, right? I'm jumping up and I'm jumping down, right? Two foot takeoff, two foot takeoff. Essentially, you would call that, you would call that essentially rebounding, right? So number one, we've got rebounding. Wow, can't spell it. We've got rebounding box jumps, which is what your normal one is, right? So you're jumping up, jumping down two foot. The next one you have is, so this is the fastest, right? We're going to go fastest to slowest. This is the fastest up here, and we're going to go down, we're going to go slower. The next one is a step up. Um, actually, there kind of is four options, but one option is a step up, jump down, okay? And the next option you're going to have is a step up, step down, right? Step up, step down. Technically, there is a fourth option with a jump up, step down. Personally, I wouldn't do it. I would just choose one of these three options. I don't think there's a benefit to it. A jump up, step down. You might as well just step up. If you can step up, step up. So, uh, fastest and slowest, rebounding box jumps. I did not do a single rebounding box jump. I, didn't, I never jumped on top of a box the whole 90 reps. Why? Because I think it comes down to three options. What's fastest, what's slowest, but your whole goal should be what keeps your heart rate low. Right? We're talking at maximum a 20-minute workout. At minimum for guys, you know, 12, 13 minutes, whatever the case may be, whoever the fastest guys in the world are, are going to be ridiculous. But you want to keep your heart rate as low as possible for the barbell and for the pistols. So if rebounding box jumps is like, oh, this is the fastest way I'm going to do it, but it spikes your heart rate really, light, really high, then why are you doing that? It's really not worth your time, especially when you're going to start with it, right? So you're going to see guys come out the gate, kind of like last night, hammer rebounding box jumps and then probably spike their heart rate a little bit high. Now, Ben Smith's an animal. He's great at cleaning jerks. He did all rebounding box jumps and he still was able to like crush the workout. So he's an anomaly. He's crazy. We love him. Okay. Now, the other option to keep your heart rate a little lower, you have to ask yourself, is a step up, jump down. So essentially you're stepping up and then you're jumping back down. That's a great option. It's going to be a little bit slower than rebounding box jumps, but a little bit faster than your third option, which again is step up, step down. Um, I stayed between these two options. I actually rotated between them. In the beginning, I, I did this, and at some point, I rotated back down to this because I decided, you know what, I don't really care. Now, in terms of time and speed, you're looking at you're looking at these two options. This will take like a minute, a minute to 50 seconds, right? 
wow, I'm sorry, at 50 seconds to a minute for rebounding, but you're looking at step downs and uh, step up jump downs and step up step downs, taking like 110 to 120. So yeah, it's going to be slower, but you have to ask yourself, is it worth it in the end to spike your heart rate? That's the main question that you're going to have to ask yourself when you're doing this workout. So yeah, it's slower, but what's your main goal? If you're, if you're an athlete that is planning on finishing the workout, you might want to slow down the beginning. If you're an athlete that maybe can't clean the third or fourth bar and jerk it, then your goal is to get a really good tie break time, then you might need to hammer the beginning. So it really comes down to your goals, right? Uh, next up is the clean and jerk, right? Touch and go or singles, that's the main question. <clears throat> Last night we watched the guys uh, do touch and go um, in the 95s, like five sets of five. I think a couple of guys touch and go to all 15. Um, ben Smith touch and go like 135 for like five reps. And then from there on out, everyone did singles. So you have to ask yourself, touch and goes or singles? And again, it really, it's kind of the same conversation as the box jumps, whether you're jumping or you're stepping. It really comes down to what your goals are and how far you think you're going to get. If you're like, oh, I can't clean and jerk 225, then you might try to <coughs> start out really, really hot and get as many as you can, as fast as you can, give yourself as much time as you can at 225. If you're thinking you're going to finish the workout, then you might need to slow down the beginning, treat it as a little bit slower pace in an effort to save yourself for the 315. Now, of course, you're going to see the Matt Frazier's of the world, the Ben Smith's of the world, touch and go quite a, bit, a lot of reps and still get a 315 and still look really good. It's going to come down to who you are as an athlete. For me personally, I did all singles. And now you're asking yourself, well, Jacob, yeah, they did singles too, starting like 135. I did singles at 95 pounds. I did 95 pound singles. You're like, that's stupid. You touch and go that for like eight snatches like a 20.1. Yeah, but this isn't 20.1, right? This is 20.4. And 20.4, my goal is to keep my heart rate low, right? And if I can keep my heart rate low by doing singles, then that's a thumbs up. That's a terrible thumbs up. That's a dead bird. Anyways, I decided to do singles because it keeps my heart rate lower. Is it slower? Absolutely. I think in the, I think in the long run when I got up my 15 singles at one, I'm sorry, at 95 pounds, I was already 20 to 25 seconds off of Ben Smith. But again, I'm not trying, you know, I can make up time later on the pistols because Ben's a little slower pistols. I'm a little bit faster pistols. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? You know, my, the long game is I want to be good at 315. So if I keep my heart low for 95 and do better at 315, that's where the money's made, right? So I did all singles. I didn't touch and go a single rep. I didn't think it was worth it. And I thought it worked pretty well. Next up is your power clean versus your squat, right? Um, we kind of already talked about that very briefly. And consider that if you're trying to finish the workout, and so you think you're going to get the 315 bar or the 205 bar for a female, you have to ask yourself, okay, do I want this to be my first squat? If you can do it, if you're a great cleaner, then maybe you're fine with that. But you don't want, it's really hard to jerk a weight if your squat is really off. If it's your squat's really toesy, like Jason Carroll's last night, if it's really toesy and really hard to, and once you stand it up and you're like, oh my gosh, that clean took a lot out of me, the jerk's gonna be really, really hard, if not impossible. So you have to ask yourself, okay, is it worth it to do my first clean at 315, or should I do my first clean at 275? I'm not saying clean, squat clean all the 275 reps I'm saying maybe you do your four you know four of them are power clean push jerk or power clean split jerk we'll talk about that in a second and then one of them your final one is a squat right just consider possibly warming your legs up a little bit before 315 because once you get to 315 you're in it like there's no like you can't strip it down to 305 and warm up 305 in order to hit 315 like you're at 315 it's time it's go time right so, consider doing a little bit early. I think it'll help out in the long run. Next conversation, power clean versus split jerk. It's the same concept. Same concept as the power clean versus squat clean, right? Warm up your squat clean, or sorry, your split jerk before the workout. But once you get in the workout, you're probably not going to split jerk 95 pounds. You're probably not going to split jerk 135. But consider that it's pretty easy to split jerk instead of push jerk, right? might take a second longer to bring your feet together, but it might be good to practice that and not do the first rep at 315 or 205, right? Again, same conversation. Maybe you should consider doing it at 275 instead of at 315. Do the split jerk a little bit early and be, be cognizant of the fact that I haven't split jerked in 15 minutes. Yes, my overhead is very warm, but am I prepared for that dip and drive in that split position? That's the real question that comes down to. Uh, last conversation is the tie break, right? So tie break, wow, can't spell, tie break. That's a huge portion of the workout. 
no matter who you are, if you don't finish the workout, so you're stuck at, you're stuck at a barbell. Obviously, you can finish the workout and be stuck at pistols and box jumps. That can happen if you're like time capped. But most people are going to be stuck at a barbell, right? Because they can't lift it or they fail it or whatever the case may be or the time cap hits. You need to make sure that you know going into the workout, you know, I'm Joe. I'm going to struggle with a 275 cleaning jerk. Okay, if Joe knows that, then he needs to make sure the 30 pistols before it, okay, that he's hammering them out as fast as he can to get the best tie break time, knowing that if he gets a 275 and he gets three of the five reps, okay, compared to everyone else in the world who only got three of five reps, he might have a really good tie break time there, he, therefore he ranks really high. That's what you need to be cognizant of, is what weight is going to give me a lot, of, a, a lot of heartache? Is it 275? Okay, hammer the thing before it. Is it 315? Okay, hammer the thing before it. So knowing that, even if you know you can finish the workout, okay, even if you know, even if I approached it and said, okay, I know I can clean, clean, clean and jerk 315 for five reps, you still should be... You still should be cautious and knock those pistols out before as hard as you can because, you know, God forbid you get to 315 and, you know, your leg cramps or something happens and you can't clean and jerk it and you don't finish the five reps. Don't just go through the last set of 30 lack of days goal thinking, okay, I'm going to keep my heart rate low for the 315 unless you're Nick your anchor and you just crush it. You know, don't, I'm going to get my heart rate low for 315. Like you should probably hammer it out as fast as you can. That way when you get there and, you know, again, like I said, God forbid you don't finish the five, you still have a solid tie break time. So what I did was I hammered out the last set of pistols as fast as I could um, and then I took a long rest before I started because I was, I was gassed. And I needed a couple, I needed a little bit of time before I clean and jerk that first weight. So bear that in mind. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for 20.4. It's a really fun workout. It's not a heavy breather like the ones in the past. It's still a fun workout. It's not like 20.1 or 20.2 or 20.3. I kind of feel bad for all the affiliate owners in the world. Kudos to you guys. I kind of feel bad for you because you have two 20-minute workouts or probably 20-minute workouts for CrossFit gym. So everyone on Friday Night Lights, it's going to be a long night, but it's still going to be fun. Great workout. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys later. See ya.